when they started hydrating, getting ready for it. I asked Pete Carroll how much preparation for the Heat did the Seahawks do. He said that much. They have to play in it too. Tom, up to you guys. All right, Lloyd, thank you very much. Try and stay cool down there if you can. The Chargers won the toss. They chose to defer to getting the football in the second half. So, one of the most electrifying talents in the NFL hopes to have his hands on the football momentarily, and that's Percy Harvin. The go back set to put a right foot on it, and we're underway in San Diego. Harvin deep out of his own end zone will bring it out. Spins his way across the 20, a penalty flag down on the play. As he's dropped at the 22 yard During line. the return, illegal block in the back, number 23. The receiving team, half of this to the goal, first down. Pete Morelli, our referee today in his 18th season. And in his third season, 25-year-old Richmond, Virginia native, Russell Wilson. His third year in the league, his third year as a starter. 29 wins, including the playoffs. San Diego, a tall task today on defense to try and slow down the Seahawks. And they're without Brandon Flowers. Their starting left corner and without Jared Johnson, whose wife went into labor earlier today. He will miss the game as well as Flowers. They fake it to Lynch and dump it off to the tight end, Zach Miller. He's all the way up to the 30-yard line. Look at this play fake by Russell Wilson. They're making it look and sound like run. Watch Marshawn Lynch. They're going to look like they're going to run that zone stretch. But this is what Russell Wilson is known for. His ability to use that mag magician, Houdini-like look to show that fake, be able to run that play-action boot, and get that ball to Zach Miller, who's known as more of a blocking tight end. And 22 on first down. Now the Seahawk way, if you will. They give it to Lynch. And the scrum will take him out to the 35-yard line. A gain of close to five on first down. Well, certainly two impact players for Seattle on offense. We know all about Lynch. We know all about Harvin. But what about this San Diego defense? It's going to be very important for the pass rush. Melvin Ingram, Dwight Freeney, to not allow Russ Wilson to get comfortable in the quarterback. And Eric Weddle, he's going to have to be able to diagnose what this Seattle offense is doing. Well, there are two time for ball three safety. backfield out of the shotgun Wilson batted in and out of the hands of Ricardo Lockett it'll bring up third down and five Lockett another one of those great finds by John Snyder and Pete Carroll and their entire football operations staff out of Fort Valley State signed as a college free agent he's getting more and more playing time same holds true today for the rookie Paul Richardson, their second round pick out of Colorado. Third down. Down the sideline. What a catch made by Jermaine Curse. And a penalty flag is down. It looked like the defender never turned around to find the ball. And that's just a one-on-one -on -one matchup. It's mano we mano Who's going to come away with this one? Talk Pass about a great ball. Number 23 defense. Automatic. First down. We'll see at the top of the screen here, we're just going to run a simple one-on-one -on -one fly pattern. It's you against me. Gets a great outside release. Look at the ball where Russell Wilson puts that. He doesn't turn around. That's an easy catch for Curse. See the head coach right there fired up after that game of 30. He beats Stevie Williams, who is one of the players playing in place of the injured Brandon Flowers in the San Diego secondary. Harvin. You see where they spot him. He'll be down to the 31 yard line. A gain of four, second and six coming up. Seattle just blitzed Green Bay in week one. It was no contest pretty much right from the get-go. 
36 to 16, and it wasn't even that close. No, it wasn't. They they wanted to get after Aaron Rodgers. They didn't want to have him with his feet set to have that comfort uh, that Aaron Rodgers is used to. And when you get him out of this game, it just goes to show you the impact this defense can have on anyone. And dropped in the backfield is Robert Turbin by Melvin Ingram. We missed all of last season with a torn LCL, and he's healthy again this year. He's healthy, and they're excited to have him back. He brings that extra pass rush, pass rush threat that they need off the edge, and that's a great job of him stepping up and making a good play from the backside and running that play down. Lynch still stands on the sideline with a third and eight. Need to get to the 25. Blitz coming. Wilson in trouble. And dropped in midfield. Listen to this crowd in San Diego right now. This is what they wanted to create with this matchup, this home field advantage. And here we go. Third down reaching towards the red zone they're going to dial it up they're going to have a man in the middle that is going to come up unaccounted for right down the center of that offense that's what they want to create they want to pressure down the middle they want to keep russell wilson in the pocket and that's how they're going to come away with a win in this game Brady, the seven-time pro bowler in his 11 years with indianapolis takes him out of field goal range with that loss of 13 on the sack and now John Ryan, that one nearly blocked. Player lost to helmet. And that is a touchback. The big defensive stop after a good start to a drive. Now Rivers and company get the football for San Diego. The San Diego Chargers, and they're with a... Starting center in Rich Rundberger, who's taking over for the longtime standout Hartwood. And on first down, it's dumped off to their future Hall of Fame tight end, Antonio Gates. Rivers in his 11th year out of North Carolina State University. The 2013 NFL Comeback Player of the Year. And only Drew Brees is thrown for more yards than Rivers going back his first year in 2004. The first down is Ryan Matthews. Now, Matthews, a year ago, rushed for 1,255 yards. He carried it nearly 300 times. In week one, he only had 12 rushing attempts for 40 yards in a loss to Arizona. That's not the formula that they need to win this football game. They've got to get Ryan Matthews involved in this offense early in order to keep themselves in third and short situations like this. They take Matthews out of the game. On a third and two, Danny Woodhead in the backfield alongside of Rivers. And Woodhead the catch, and that's enough for a first down, crossing the 30 to the 31. This is what Danny Woodhead brings, is the versatility of somebody who can also run it out of the backfield, but catch it. Last year, he had 76 catches for 605 yards and six touchdowns. That X factor of him being able to do both allows them to have a, a multiple offense and still keep the Seattle team guessing. Matthews back in there. Seattle, the number one ranked defense in the NFL the season ago. Cut. Matthews. And he is stuck. Bobby Wagner rechecking quickly up in L.A. with Joel Klatt for a game break. All right, Tom, let's go to Cleveland where Brian Hoyer is trying to bring Cleveland back. Down by one, under 15 seconds. Breakdown in coverage. Andrew Hawkins sets up Billy Cundiff. 29 yards for the win. Cleveland by two, 26 24. Tom, David, and Laura. That's a big win for the Cleveland Browns, who played a terrible first half in Pittsburgh last week. Played a great second half. His second down. And on the crossing pattern. Catch is made by the second year standout Keenan Allen is short of the first down by maybe two yards. A second and a second third down and short coming up for San Diego on this their first drive of the game. We see Ryan Matthews coming back into this one. And don't take anything away from this. This may be the opening drive, but this first third and short 
is a start of what they want to create for the rest of the game. So people may say, hey, it's the opening drive. You want to establish the physical dominance right away up front. Donald Brown joining Ryan Matthews in the backfield on this third and one. San Diego is the best of this third and one in the league last year. And they'll convert again. Matthews out of the backfield, run out of bounds, right in midfield. First down, San Diego. Doing a great job of, of getting him out of the backfield. You'll see they do a great job of sending across Keenan Allen to open him up and give him that one-on-one -on -one matchup to the sideline to, to create that first down. Hard to believe that Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay not one time in 33 pass attempts. Drew for Richard Sherman's side. And Pete Carroll said, we're not building guys for that. We have confidence in everybody. He's staying on that side. And if there's anyone happy about, happy about that, it's Byron Maxwell. He's got four picks or five picks in the last six games. Throw me the football. Come my way. If you want to do that, I'm going to take advantage of it as well. Matthews, the first down carry for a couple of yards. All right. Talked about Ornberger getting the start in place of Nick Hardwick. Ryan Matthews hoping for a bigger game. And boy, the Seattle defense, you can pick anybody. You sure can. But Bobby Wagner in the middle of that defense, you know, those crossing routes across the middle that they're going to want to throw without to be able to have the contact. He's going to have to have a big game in the middle. Matthews slips inside defenders. Very close to another. Chargers first down, maybe about a foot short. These are the situations that the San Diego offense want to have. Stay in those third and short situations. Keep out of those third and eight plus because that's when the Seattle defense can pin their ears back and not worry about anything else but attack the quarterback. So third time on this series, the Chargers have had Third and two or less. This is less than a yard. They'll move the chains again. Tell you what, it's only the first drive of the game. But San Diego on offense is coming out clearly not intimidated by the Seahawks defense. No, they're not. When we talked to Mike McCoy and Phillip Rivers, they said, we're going to run our offense. This is what we want to do. This is what's going to give us the best opportunity to win this football game. It's not about them. It's about us as an offense. Well, the Seattle 39, the 10th play of this drive. Wide open Woodhead, and that is another first down to the Seattle 25. This was a big part of San Diego's success last season. Extended drives, long drives, multiple plays. You're going to see they're going to come up the middle. You're going to watch Danny Woodhead take this out of the backfield. He's just going to run a little diagonal to the inside. See him break, clears out, nobody blitzes, gets into the open gap. Hey, this is what they want to do. If you're not going to blitz, if you're only going to rush four, we're going to get our back up the backfield and we're going to dink and dunk downfield. Hey, go play! Play! Move! Play! Play! Zachary Knighty! Get on! Fumble! On the exchange. And it appears from here as though Rivers was able to fall on top of it. Or is it Owen Berger? No, it's Rivers at the bottom of the pot. Remember! Rivers in his career has hit 45 different receivers, yet almost 90% of the snaps he's taken as an NFL quarterback are under Nick Hardwick. Nick Hardwick is, I can easily say, if not the or one of the best San Diego Chargers offensive linemen ever. So to replace him, to make the calls at the line of scrimmage, to have to do all those things, yeah, that's great, but you got to get the ball to the quarterback first. Last year, the Chargers, 39 drives of 10 plays or more, looking for the big one here. Had an eye on Royal in the corner of the end zone. So this will bring up their first third and long on this opening drive. Their other three have been third and two or less. And this is something that they struggled with in the fourth quarter last week against Arizona. The third and eights, the third and thirteens. Those aren't the positions you want to put yourself in, especially early on in this football game. Rocket, rocket. Third down and 
and on. And River is set. Michael Bennett back at the 33-yard line. You're going to watch Cliff Averill off of the edge. He's going to get DJ Fluker to turn on his second step. You've got to stay square. He's going to bend this edge. You're going to see him turn Fluker. So what it's going to do is it's going to force everything back inside. It is going to force everything back. He doesn't have that room to step up and really get in there. That's where they create those sacks. This will be a 50-yard field goal attempt. Novak has been automatic inside of 40. And you start stretching beyond 50, only 8 of 14 in his career. But well, this one is handled. And easily good. So points on the opening drive. Seattle did not allow a single point on an opening possession a year ago. Sponsored by Bud Light, who reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. 3 nothing. San Diego in front. Hard to believe. On an opening drive. Those are the first points allowed by Seattle since 2012. Kickoff out of bounds. And the Ryan Novak Rui, the after ball booting a, on the 40 a 50 yard line. field goal. Timeout. Hooks run out of bounds. So a great field position for the Seahawks on their second drive of the game. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Pizza Hut's Bacon and Cheese Stuffed Crust. By the new Samsung Galaxy S5, the next big thing is here. And by Chevrolet, find new roads. Talked about the Seattle defense the last time they allowed the opposition to score points of any kind. They go back to week 13. 2012 when Jake Cutler hit Earl Bennett on a 12-yard touchdown. Now that's an unbelievable stat to think of. Two years since somebody scored on the end of the First down, back to Lynch. Well, that first hit was delivered by Sharice Wright, and Lynch tacked on four more after the hit. But that's the M.O. on Lynch. Lloyd's well, after contact. You know, some of the early game headlines, RG3 injured early. What a game by his backup, Kirk Cousins. DeMarco Murray in a huge Dallas win. Back-to-back 100-yard -back rushing games for him. And you think Sammy Watkins is worth that draft pick out of Clemson? I think so, and this is what they've expected out of Sammy Watkins. Going in and establishing the speed and the tempo that they want to. That's a great start for Buffalo to be 2-0. That is a completed pass on a second down. It will bring up third down and one. Now, surprisingly, this is an area you would assume Seattle was great in last year when they won the Super Bowl. They had the sixth lowest percentage of converting on third down in a yard of all teams in a league. And they were only 36% on third down last week against Green Bay. So this is something that they're definitely going to have to do, to do better at. They pitch it to Percy Harvin. And that's a first down. Down the sideline goes Harvin. And he will go into the end zone. The electrifying Percy Harvin takes a pitch 51 yards for the touchdown. <laughs> This is what Percy Harvin does. He creates the big play possibility of just being on the football field. They're going to sell it to Marshawn Lynch like they're going to run a little dive inside. And just to toss out, to flip outside, look at the great blocking by Baldwin. When it comes to running the football and running these things, everybody on the field, all 11 guys got to participate and get involved. Baldwin is the key on that, to get that block, to seal that edge for Harvin to take that ball down the sidelines. Harvin, the Virginia Beach, Virginia native, 26 years old, former number one pick by Minnesota in 2009. And whenever he puts his hands on the football, there's that block by Baldwin you referred to. And that's tough as a wide receiver to get your hands inside right there in the open and really seal that edge. Great blocking by Baldwin and the receivers. 
This kid is something else, man. Fast, powerful, strong. Doesn't matter whether he stepped out of bounds now. Nobody challenged him. It's a touchdown. Every scoring play in the NFL is reviewed in the replay booth. This one should have been looked at again. His foot is clearly out of bounds. We thought the first one before, but Percy Harvin's foot is clearly out of bounds here. This is an official review. So right now, it's up to the officials. As we don't see anything. They're not doing anything. No call. This is one that won Seattle's favor. Boy, did it ever. The way it works is after a scoring play, before the point after is kicked or tried, every scoring play is reviewed up in the replay here. You don't challenge that as a coach on the field. And that's simply a blown call. There's no two ways about it. Seattle, they're happy about it. Career long rushing. Attempt by Harvin is a touchdown. Mike McCoy has to be walking that sideline wondering how in the world that touchdown was not taken away. It certainly looked as though Harvin stepped out of bounds along the sideline. But it stands as a 51-yard score. 7-3 Seattle. We're going to bring in Mike Pereira from our studios just north in Los Angeles. On first down, Rivers a pump fake and delivers to Antonio Gates. A first down, a gain of 20. Mike Pereira, how does that happen? Shouldn't. This is a breakdown, both involving the replay official and New York. I was in the offices in New York. They look and confirm the ruling on the field. They confirmed this was a touchdown. It's not. He stepped out of bounds. This play had to get stopped, and, and this is the first breakdown I've seen of this new system where New York is a part of it. All right, Mike Pereira, thank you very much. Rivers, good protection. Matthews along the sideline, run out of bounds to the 43-yard line. Mike, bring all the fans up to date about the new system now. Uh, out of New York. We'll check back in. There you get a look at what is basically the control center of all NFL officials. They're watching replays, they're taking a look, working hand in hand and in concert with a game official here, the replay official here. Donald Brown, the former Indianapolis Colt. And let's see where he stepped out of bounds. 36 yard line, sort of bring up second down and two. Does a great job here. It almost looks like he was going to chip for King Dunlap out there on the edge. He just runs that little quick out. Sometimes they don't account for him and think that he's going to stay under the block. Okay, a very exciting first quarter. 7 3, Seattle in front. Controversy? You better believe it. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after this. Second down and two. San Diego with a football to Seattle 36 yard line. They hand it off to Danny Woodhead. He appears to have enough for a first down. I want to go back to Los Angeles and bring in Mike Pereira. Mike, you talked about the new system this year. Bring fans up to date what that means. We're at the Art McNally Game Day Center, which you actually see right there. And that means in New York, New York, they're looking at every turnover and every score. And they, along with the replay official who are communicating, will confirm a score, which is what they did on that sideline play, but they did it way too quickly. They should have waited for all the shots because clearly it's not a score. But that's their involvement now with the, the actual play. Under pressure, hanging in there is Rivers and delivers a strike to Royal. That'll be a first down of the 21-yard line. What very impressive so far is San Diego on offense, something it was not in any way, shape, or form at Arizona Monday night. They seem very sharp. They seem very crisp, keeping themselves in those third and manageable, third and short situations. And that's how you're going to do it. And especially, they're doing a great job of picking up just a four-man pressure and protecting Philip Rivers. Rivers 
looking to the corner. Complete Keenan Allen. And he's to the six-yard line. First and goal, San Diego. And they went right at Richard Sherman right there. And that's something they talked about yesterday in the meeting. They felt confident in Keenan Allen's ability to compete and make plays against Richard Sherman. So we've already seen they've made adjustments and done something that Green Bay didn't do last week. Which I'm still stuck on. I still am too. When you have a, a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers, you wouldn't think that he would make somebody else change his football game. But Richard Sherman did. Two additional offensive linemen. And Matthews trying to break it to the outside, to the end zone. There is a penalty flag down. Holding, number 83, offense. Ten yard penalty remains, first down. John Phillips. He's a third tight end in this San Diego offense. We're going to watch this run. Sometimes when this happens, when you run it, we're going to watch John Phillips right here. When that ball is supposed to go inside, and then he goes outside, you can see his hands are inside. But once they see that pull, and that defensive lineman goes down, and it looks like he's throwing him down, they're going to call that. And also, when you think that ball's going inside, you're establishing strong inside arm, inside knee. So when that ball, ball bounces back out, it's hard to adjust that, and that's where you get those holding calls. I'm not sure what's going on here with Philip Rivers. Coming around and talking to the officials. No timeout has been signaled for. 2-12. 40. Okay. We just need a game. Play. Thank you. All right, so rather than a touchdown after the penalty, Chargers backed up. Second down, first down at goal. Just outside the 15. Avoiding a sack, Rivers. He will run it, something he frequently does. And picks up three. This is something that Seattle is great at, especially down here in the red zone. You're going to see Michael Bennett lined up wide as a four technique, head up on that offensive tackle to the right side. And they're going to run a game. They're going to run a TE twist. And that's what got Averill clean inside that backfield to cause that pressure. There's some drawing going on there as Rivers was run out of bounds with Bobby Wagner. Second and goal. Penalty down. Nearly intercepted. Very fortunate is Rivers. That was not picked off. Had an eye on Floyd. And we wait on the penalty. Offside. Defense, number 72. Five-yard penalty remains. Second down. That's Michael Bennett. Rivers clearly going out of bounds. I'm stunned that was not penalized. I mean, I'm not suggesting that, that, that that's a, a vicious hit, but it's something you see all the time, Paul. It's clear that he's out of bounds. It's two feet. The play is over. And that a little extra shove and push. When that happens on the football field, you see flags happen all the time. Blitz coming. Woodhead. Nearly a spectacular catch, looking one way, then turning around the other. But it's incomplete. Third and goal. They're going to run inside a, a, a twist to make sure that Philip Rivers gets rid of that ball quickly. Thrown it to the outside, exactly where it needs to be, over the shoulder, to where only Danny Woodhead can catch it. Now that's a play that you're hoping that you come up with and really put yourself back in the position that you want to be. On top in the second quarter with everything in your factor. Third and goal. 
to the end zone. Touchdown, Antonio Gates. Great touchdown right there by here we're gonna have one-on-one -on -one Antonio Gates versus Cam Chancellor. It's gonna give him a little outside move, get to the outside. This is what Antonio Gates is known for. His ability to catch, catch the ball down in the red zone, make big plays and create mismatches. And he made up one for one right there. Here we go. San Diego is, is setting the tempo of what they want to establish, and they're doing a great job of it. 46 times in their careers when they get down in the red zone, Rivers hooks up. On a touchdown throw to Gates. He had a couple of big drops in Arizona last week. Those are the things David Deal talked about. For San Diego to have a chance, they have to make plays they didn't make on Monday night. Visa Checkout, the easier way to pay online. By McDonald's, official sponsor of the NFL. I'm loving it. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. That's a gas lamp quarter. The historic heart of downtown San Diego. And we welcome you back to what has been a thrilling game thus far. 10-7 Chargers in front of the defending Super Bowl champion Seahawks who go on the road for the first time this year after drilling Green Bay in the season opener. Those drives are what San Diego need. Last year, they averaged 33 minutes time of possession. Harmon brings it out to the 22-yard line. Wednesday, be prepared for a new breed of fighter as 16 women compete for that historic UFC title. Jaw-dropping new episode of The Ultimate Fighter. A champion will be crowned Wednesday, 10 Eastern. And Pacific only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. I can't wait to watch this. 16 women all fighting in the 115-pound class. And for the first time, somebody's going to be fighting for a title belt. That's exciting. Third possession of this first half for the Seahawks. And surprisingly, only two carries so far. For Marshawn Lynch. Into the hands of Walters. They just activated him to start returning punts. Russell Wilson talked to us during the meeting. He wants to make every handoff, every play action look the exact same. He wanted to compare himself to Houdini. You don't know where the ball is, you can't see where the ball is, and he really prides himself on keeping defensive end honest and really selling that play action. He is just one terrific young man. He certainly is, and you can hear it, the enthusiasm that it brings. And it, the thing that I love, he said he wants to be more engaged. He wants to be a guy whose presence is always felt. Ball is loose. Picked up by Seattle. That's Luke Wilson, who's tackled at the 11. Melvin Ingram, healthy again. They believe he has a chance to be a great one. He's the one that stripped it away. And this is why they were so excited to have him back after his knee injury. You're just going to see him rip on that edge going one-on-one -on -one against the tight end. These are the mismatches that you want to create, especially with this home field advantage, beating him on the snap. What a great start and force fumble to get this going down and really push them back in their own end zone. The loss of nine, so third and 19. And Lynch up to the 14-yard line and for the first time today, it's three and out. And that's a position that I don't care what offense that you're in, you do not want to be in that third and long situation on the road, which can be the Achilles heel for any defending Super Bowl champion team. Eddie Royal stands back at his own 35-yard line, waiting on a punt from John Ryan, Seattle's all-time punting average leader. He's had a good career in Seattle. Cut it out of bounds. Let's see where they spot this. Phillip Rivers is pointing it at midfield. Let's see if the officials agree with him. They're going to spot it at 
the San Diego 45-yard line. That is only a 37-yard punt by Ryan. Chargers lost their standout 11-year center Nick Hardwood to a neck injury last week. Rich Ornberger took over for him at center, and that was a big story this week, how Ornberger would hold up against the number one defense in the NFL. When asked David Deal, you are an all-pro as a left tackle. You also played right tackle, right guard, left guard, first down, and nowhere to go. And able to cover it up is Matthews. Now, you never played center. No, I, I could snap and I could block. I just couldn't do them at the same time, which is a very important thing when you're playing center. But you got to get a lot of credit to the San Diego Chargers offensive line. They're doing a great job of holding up. And more importantly than that, Philip Rivers is doing a great job of getting rid of the football quickly. His decisiveness, his ability to read things and get that ball out of his hands. Last year, he got 351 balls. He got rid of his hands out of 2.5 seconds or less. That's key against the defense, like the defense of CM. That's a loss of eight yards on first down. Great protection. And he just threads a needle to Allen. Getting a pretty good chunk of that back. It's right at midfield, so it breaks up a third down and five. Look at the numbers for Rivers. Only a pair of incompletions. Not much in a running game. Gates with a touchdown. Rivers has hit six different receivers. Seahawks showing blitz, and here they come. And right away, it's Allen. Boy, Rivers picked it up immediately, and that's a first down to the 38-yard line. It's a great job. Philip Rivers identifies that there's going to be a blitz. Offensive line steps up. Keenan Allen is one-on-one -on -one outside against Richard Sherman. Sees the blitz, runs that little quick inside slant, and gets that first down. Moving the chain, staying in tempo. You know, this is what this offense wants. It's not going to be forcing things, but playing at their pace. First down at the 38, four-man rush all day to throw. Now Rivers will slide. That'll be a gain of three. And I want to get back to that a minute ago because I think you and I were both just really stunned that an offense like the Green Bay Packers would throw the ball 33 times and completely avoid Sherman's side of the field. It's not to say he's not the best in the business. He might be, but no man is invincible. No, nobody's invincible, and, and there have been balls thrown against them that have been caught, but you've got to test players. They're out there for a reason. Everybody's good in the NFL, but I don't like the, the, you know, what you're sending to your offense if you don't have confidence to get the job done all because of one play. Danny Woodhead breaking out of a tackle from Bobby Wagner and is able to spin down to the 31-yard line. So, David Deal, here we are again, a very manageable third down. And two, with Richard Sherman, you're talking about a guy who became the first player since Champ Bailey with eight or more interceptions in back-to-back -back years. Three times they've thrown at him today, and they're perfect. They sure are, and that is what we heard from San Diego. They said, we're going to play our offense. We're going to run our game. We know he's a great player, but we can't let him change who we are in our identity. Woodhead. Depending on his spot, might have enough for a first down. He says he has it. There's a little fire and passion from the 5'8", 200-pounder out of Shadron State in Nebraska. And this just shows the toughness and the competitiveness of Phillip Rivers. I mean, talk about a football picture right there. Bloody hands delivering that football on a key third down to keep this drive going down into the red zone. That's what we know Phillip Rivers for. A little delay to Matthews. Or Donald Brown, they give it to, and he spun down to the Holding. 21. Number 74, offense, 10-yard penalty remains, first down. That's the center, Ornberger. He's got a tough job ahead of him. Brandon Meebane is one of the best in the NFL. He is so smart. He knows how to work the offhands. Watch him. Watch him inside here. Here's Brandon Meebane going one-on-one -on -one against Ornberger. Going to see him pull, get his hands inside. 
that last stretch right there, getting those hands outside of the framework, especially with the running back. You keep your hands inside, a running back can break an arm tackle. But those penalties right there down when they're marching in, you can't have those. We got to go. go. First down and 20, all out blitz coming. And Rivers throws, and it's incomplete. He had an eye on Malcolm Floyd. And he had bodies hanging all over him, including Bruce Irvin, who they feel like for the first time after hip surgery during the offseason is fully at 100%. And he is one of the most explosive athletes on this team. So to have him back healthy, to add another pass rush threat that they can bring, that alone signifies what he can do for this team with everybody they have else they have in that lineup. If you've got to count for just one more guy, that's where the mismatches come. In the hands of Royal. Great blocking in front of him. And he's able to get inside the 25. They'll mark it just inside the line. Do a great job out here. They're going to run that little quick screen. You're going to see King Dunlop and Reinhardt get out here and really make that play. And give that running back or that wide receiver, Eddie Royal, a two-way go. He can take that inside. He can take that outside. Just get on your guy and let the receiver make the play. San Diego six out of seven so far on third downs. And again, the Seahawks showing blitz. Five-man rush. Rivers, too tall for Allen. Byron Maxwell in coverage, and out comes the field goal unit to try and add to this three-point Chargers lead. Get a great job of stepping up, holding up in protection. Can't make the throw, but we go back to it. That third and eight situation. These are the things that down the stretch can cause problems for this offense if you don't keep them in those third and shorts that they've been successful of, of pursuing and getting those first downs. 43-yard field goal try by Novak out of the hold of Cyprus. And just did sneak it in the upright. Have to be impressed so far on this very hot Sunday in San Diego. Rivers and company with a 13-7 lead. The sponsored by AT&T. Mobilizing your world. Nearly 120 degrees on the playing field here in San Diego today. 13-7, home team in front. 440 to play until halftime. And we talked about you know, the Seahawks playing power football. And that's what Pete Carroll talked about yesterday. Physical defense, good special teams, running the ball, taking it right to them. But Seattle, outside of one touchdown run, 51 yards. So it really jades the stats a little bit. But so far, Lynch. Just three carries for 14 yards. And now Harmon takes it. And the ball is loose. Harmon fumbles the kickoff. It belongs to We Wait. Still no signal given yet. San Diego has it. Great play right there. Look at Listen to the crowd. That's Lavelle Connor who made the hit. The momentum changing plays, the special teams to give your offense another possession in close range like this. These are the things that we heard Seattle say arm us. We're a special teams group. We're running the football. We're a physical team on defense. They're doing the complete opposite right now, and San Diego is doing a great job of capitalizing on these mistakes and moving forward with their group. Cabell Connor was the one who stripped it away. It looked like Daryl Stuckey, a backup safety, covered up the fumble by Harvin. And it's great, and, and here we go. Phillip Rivers right in the position that he wants to be in, where he can do whatever he wants to do with this up group and put them in the best position to put another touchdown on the board. 
Well, we welcome those of you watching the game from Tampa where, due to weather, there's a delay in that one. This is Danny Woodhead on first down. And it's inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. They do a great job of just running a simple draw here to make it look like pass. You see the, the center get up to the next level, and that's what they want to do. They want to create those open lanes, let these penetrating defensive linemen get upfield, and it's just going to create an open, just natural running lane for Woodhead to get through. 13-7 charges in front. There's that lane again. And that's a gain of five yards on first down. And we're seeing the toughness out of this Chargers offensive line. They're running back-to-back -back draw plays, and they're saying, hey, you may know what we're doing, but we're still going to be physical, and we're going to keep pushing the pile. So give a lot of credit to this Chargers offensive line. They're not scared, and they're playing physical. Woodhead this time split through the far left. An empty backfield on second and five, and they find Woodhead. He's inside the five, first and goal, San Diego. Boy, this is a play-calling offensive clinic so far against a defense that most people just wilt in front of. And if you're sitting here watching, you can look at the entire Seattle defense all looking to the sidelines because they can't substitute. The way that San Diego is running their offense at the line of scrimmage, it's forcing them to maintain their personnel on the field and really plays into the advantage of the Chargers. We're going to run our stuff, we're going to run our offense, but we're going to do it well at our tempo. They pitch it, trying to cut it back to the inside. Wagner there to make the hit on Ryan Matthews, second and goal, and a flag is down. The penalty really hurt the Chargers on their last drive, forcing a field goal rather than sustaining and a chance Illegal for a touchdown. Hands to the fate, number 16, offense, 10-yard penalty. Remains first down. That's Shea uh, 0-2-2. We're going to see his hands off. Yep, right here. You see him right in the face, grabbing that face mask. They'll call that every single time. with a legion of boom that's the only way you can slow those guys down well get your hands out of one way or another yeah absolutely and like we said earlier running the football it takes everybody on the field the fullback the running backs the old line the tight ends but the wide receivers to get down and dirty and gritty down there down here in the red zone will pay dividends for them in the long run so first and goal out at the 14 Rivers flushed out of the pocket, looking around, flag down, he throws, incomplete. Oh, what a hit delivered by the Super Bowl MVP. Oh, number 63, up in. That's Johnny Troutman called for the infraction, but how about that hit? First down. Malcolm Smith on Phillip Rivers. You see this, they say hits on the quarterback are cumulative. And those are the hits that you don't want any quarterback taking during a game. you got to give Phillip Rivers credit, standing in the pocket, rolling it out, throwing and delivering that ball with the pressure in his face. But when you break that contain, when you roll it and have those clean hits, that's what you want as a defense because the next thing he's going to be doing is he's going to be looking for who's coming for him. First and goal inside the five is turned into first and goal outside the 20. And that'll bring us to the two-minute warning. The self this is the two-minute warning. The self-inflicted penalties, the mental toughness aspect of it, you can't have that. You're at home, the cadence is your friend. Today's game on Fox. Sponsored by iTunes. Follow your favorite team all season long at iTunes.com. Hey, red, red, red. Second down and goal. Put it in the hands of Royal. Blockers out in front of him inside the 15. Spun down and leveled at the seven yard line. 
So all of a sudden, second and goal from the 23 becomes third and goal inside the 10. And we saw this the last drive. The penalty pushes him back, forces him a field goal. They get the ball down inside the five. Penalty. Ten yards back with the hold. Get another penalty, or with the face mask, penalty. Get another holding call, penalty. You bust your butt to get all the way down here to give yourself the best opportunity to put a touchdown on the board. But when you make those mental errors yourself, it, it, it pushes you out of the tempo of what you want to do, and it doesn't give you a great advantage. And now timeout. With 111. Timeout. San Diego, first team timeout. 111. We'll take a timeout. Third down and goal for San Diego. Ball at the eight yard line. Rivers in trouble. Lofts it into the corner. It is caught by Antonio Gates. We wait on the flag in the corner of the end zone. Now we saw Gates get away with a little bump his last touchdown. But we wait. Holding. At the 35 feet back. Holding the line. Results of the play. Touchdown. That is a touchdown. The penalty on Cam Chancellor. And this is what you love about Phillip Rivers. His pocket presence. His confidence that he's going to stand in there with pressure in his face and still deliver that football. Seattle runs and uh, gets a push on the edge to really pressure him. He really steps up in the pocket and is still deliver that deliver that football for the touchdown. To overcome all the penalties right. and still have that touchdown, that's what they need. They can't shoot themselves in the foot. They can't ruin their own drives with those penalties and expect to come away with positive things. Well, that's a great point. That might be the most impressive part of this is overcoming a pair of penalties. Look at his eyes. Look at downfield. Look at him standing in there in the pocket. Watch him. Eyes downfield. Steps up. Feels that pressure. Ducks under it. And still has his eyes to see where Antonio Gates is going to break open on that. Unbelievable play. And this is everything Antonio Gates is all about. Give him that opportunity. To let him play one-on-one -on -one and match up. And against the linebacker, he's going to win that, that matchup every single time. Boy, that ball nearly stripped out of Rivers' hands by Bennett. There it is, the good old fist pump by Philip Rivers. It was all set up, you may remember, that touchdown drive by the fumble on the kickoff by Percy Harbin. That is the first time Harbin has lost a fumble since 2012. So, you know, we bring up 2012, we've seen a couple of things in this game already that haven't happened since that year. The opponent scoring on their opening drive against the Seattle defense, and now the Harbin fumble. And I think one of the things that we're not stating is, I don't think if you go back in the first half of the game, I guarantee Marshawn Lynch has had more than three attempts of carrying the ball throughout that stretch. He's their cowbell. 33 of the last 41 games, they've rushed for over 100 yards. Get him the football. Let Beast Mode unleash if you want to get your offense back in the groove because that's your identity. Short kick and handled by Luke Wilson. Now, we've been talking about Green Bay not throwing to the side of the field where Richard Sherman is. That time, they forced him to come to the other side of the field. And that's what they did. They stem, they bring him one-on-one -on -one. he's got Eddie Royal they want to create anything that they can do to get him off of that corner mark and make him play across the field so they're going to move they're going to do different combinations they're going to run bunch routes that they're not going to have a receiver down here at the bottom at that left corner position to force him to play the opposite and it opened up things for Antonio Gates to score that touchdown all right so we have a minute one left until halftime Seattle with all three timeouts Wilson, leaping catch, beautifully done by Doug Baldwin. And that's up close to midfield. Clock continues to run. Seahawks have all three timeouts left. And now they'll spend one. 
We're not going to let 15 or 20 seconds burn while guys are running up the field. So it's a brand new show coming to Fox. Critics are raving about saying things like, it's a lightning bolt of fresh air with the IT ensemble of the season. You don't want to miss Red Band Society. That is coming your way this Wednesday night, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, on Fox. That Seattle defense has been on the field the overwhelming majority of this first half. Chargers have had the football almost 21 minutes compared to a little less than eight for Seattle. And, and that's the advantage that they've had, the, the possessions, the long drives, being able to wear down this defense. And that's where the heat plays a factor. If you can keep a group on the field where they can't switch like hockey lines, that's where you're going to break teams down. That catch was the first first down by the Seahawks in this second quarter. Freedy coming. Wilson able to get out of trouble, dumps it off to Turbin, and big yardage ahead of him. And he is chopped down to the 22-yard line. And a timeout. So just like that, they find Baldwin, they find Turbin, and let's check in up the road in L.A. What's coming up at halftime, Kurt Menefee? Coming up on the Visa Halftime, Kirk Cousins leads Washington in a blowout win. Brian Hoyer and the Browns in a big-time upset over the Saints. And the Lions couldn't play quick tonight to Cam Newton in Carolina. It's all coming up on the Visa Halftime. 32 yards on the pickup to Turbin. Remember now, the only point scored by the Seahawks in this game came on a play where the touchdown should have been taken away. Percy Harvin on a 50-yard, 51-yard touchdown run, stepped out of bounds. And it was not overturned on a scoring play review where it should have been. And since then, momentum has been completely on the side of the Chargers. Turbin, good running yardage. And he's down to the 10-yard line. Clock continues to run. Closing in on 30 seconds. One timeout left for Seattle. Wilson rolling, rolling. He'll run it himself. Slides down to the five. They may have to spend the timeout here, and they will. Penalty flag now comes in. Holding number twenty nine, defense. Five yard penalty, the end is the end of the run. First down. That's on Charlize White. Seattle will not be charged with timeout. So the Seahawks still have the one timeout remaining. They will not be charged for that timeout. First and goal from just inside the four-yard line. And no Marshawn Lynch. No Marshawn Lynch. I don't know if he's hurt or something wrong, but this is when you put your cowbell on the field and you feed it to him. Wilson wide open is Turbin. He played a big, big role in that touchdown drive. And how about Wilson? Got the football with a minute one left. And with 12 seconds remaining, a touchdown, a much needed touchdown for the Super Bowl champion Seahawks. It looks like there's some confusion in the background of this, is this safety. You're going to look at 38, Marcus Gilchrist. He's looking around and pointing. And you're not sure if he has him man on or man on man or what, but to have Turbin down here have a, a free touchdown like that, uncovered, uh, you can't have those undisciplined, you know, breakdowns on a defensive side of the ball when everything's going your way that you want it to. Point after is good. That is a momentum shifting touchdown drive. It's the first career touchdown for Robert Turbin. Congratulations to him. Look at him. He's still holding on to that football. Nobody's going to take this first one away from me. Not a chance. 
Well, here we are in one of the great military cities in the United States of America, San Diego. We'd like to welcome the men and women in uniform serving around the world watching today's broadcast in 175 countries and aboard ships at sea on AFM, the American Forces Network. God bless you all. We're standing tall and proud for the greatest country in the world, the United States of America. It's right across from where we are in downtown San Diego, Coronado Naval Base. That's where they train the baddest dudes in the world, the Navy SEAL. All right, 12 seconds left and a half. They have completely dominated by San Diego, and then you look up at the board, and after that touchdown drive, a six-point game. It just goes to show you that the margin of victory and, and a loss is that slim. It's that one single play, that one penalty that can make the complete difference in the outcome of this football game. Break the ball for the Chargers. Now they kick it short and handled by David Johnson at the 30-yard line. Antonio Gates, a couple of touchdown receptions. It's been a while. There's that 2012 year again. First time since that year where he had two touchdowns in the first half of the game. And we were wondering with a couple of timeouts left, would they put it up? We saw Sweezy going back to the locker room early. 20 to 14. This has been a very, very entertaining first half. Longtime rivals in the NFC. AFC West. We'll go to Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles. It's time now for the Visa halftime, which begins. Chargers get the football to begin the second half, leading 20 to 14. A Nissan performance that excites. Certainly have to be excited if you're a Chargers fan about quarterback Phillip Rivers, who really did not play well in Arizona on Monday night. You can't play much better than he did in the first half today. In fact, you take away the kneel down to end the first half. All four possessions for San Diego, scoring possessions, two touchdowns, two field goals. And, and that's the thing, they've kept themselves in rhythm, and they're lucky, and they've been fortunate to get themselves out of those penalties and, and really be able to still put the points up on the board that they needed and really keep successful drives. But now here in the second half, they can't come down into the red zone and have their own penalties. The, the personal, you know, the, the hands in the face, the holding, you know, the, the false starts. Those are the things that Seattle will take advantage of the second half. Goes bouncing in and through the end zone. Now the one play, it all depends on the outcome of this one that everybody's going to be talking about. A touchdown that should not have been, and even the most hardcore Seattle fans will admit to it. Harvin stepped out of bounds. Well, every touchdown needs to go under review by the officials. They went quick. They didn't go over and look at this one. So yeah, this is something that they had on the board, but it wasn't called. It's still a touchdown. But yes, that, that's something that the officials are definitely going to look at after and know that they got that one wrong. All right, first hand. Philip Rivers is 18 completions in the first half, the most by any opposing quarterback against Seattle. We keep going back to 2012. Leveled is Rivers by Brandon Meebay after the handoff, a gain of a yard. David, take us inside the locker room when it's this hot. I mean, are you looking around and a bunch of guys are getting stuck with IVs all over the locker room? Some guys are getting IVs. A lot of guys are making sure they get their electrolytes uh, to replenish because when it's 112 degrees out on the football field and you're sweating and you're perspiring and you're, and you're dehydrating yourself mentally, you're not as sharp as you need to be. And football's all about reacting, not thinking. Second and nine in the hands of Royal. Breaks a tackle, got a good block. Stiff arms, Richard Sherman. A third down and five. Let's we'll check in downstairs with Laura Oakman. Thanks, Tom. David, I wanted to talk to Pete Carroll about what you were talking about with Marshawn Lynch. He wasn't in that last drive. Carroll said he can't get the ball if we're not on the field. Our offense hasn't been able to get on the field long enough. That last drive was by design, not by injury. 
He said defensively, we are close. We've got to get back to business, but we just have to take advantage of our opportunities, which we have not been doing. I love, thank you. The ball spotted actually the 24, so third down and six on his first possession. Blitz coming. And Rivers is dropped back at the 14-yard line. Bobby Wagner came and got him, but there is a penalty flag all the way up to the 35-yard line. Hold it. Number 53 defense. Five-yard penalty automatic. First down. That's a big one. That sure is. The Seattle defense did a great job of running a twist inside. They're going to run a, a game inside here. They're going to run a twist, and they're going to slice through with the middle linebacker here. Well, that was a penalty. Well, it's hard to believe that was a penalty. It is. It's hard to believe that's a penalty, especially with the, the pressure that they were able to apply. That's what the defense is known for, the ability to get Philip Rivers' face. First down, a big carry for Donald Brown. Runs through a couple of tacklers, including Urban, and he's up to the 45-yard line. Good, tough, hard running. They were very excited to bring him in from Indianapolis to spell Woodhead, to spell the, everybody. Ryan Matthews, yep. just think about how much time Woodhead spends on the field. Third down, first and second, running. They have to have that other option back that he brings. When you look at all three of those running backs, each of the three last year hey, piled up over 750 yards from scrimmage. Each of the three scored at least seven touchdowns. Talking about Matthews, Woodhead, and Donald Brown with Indianapolis. Rivers under throws as he took a hit. Just as he threw that football, Michael Bennett wrapped him up. Check in one more time with Laura Oakman. I want to tell you what Mike McCoy said and covered the Chargers half. I said to him, we haven't seen an offense give it to Seattle's defense like we've been doing. What have you been doing the first half? He said, we're simply playing our style of offense, which means what we're seeing right now, mixing it up and taking what they give us. But he said, we've got to stop the penal penalties. They're absolutely killing us. Key to second half, do exactly what we did in the first half, but better. Well, they caught a break on really a ticky-tack hold against Smith to keep this drive alive. Second down and 10. And they dump it off out of the backfield of Brown. And he is dropped up at the 47-yard line by Marcus Burley. And San Diego, the five penalties, they had three of those five inside the red zone. And, and those are the things that you can't have and they can't have in this second half. The Seattle defense will take full advantage of each and every one of those situations because you can only get by so long with having that stuff happen. Marcus Purley will come out of the game. We'll take a timeout. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Without a heart, it's just a machine. By Papa John's, official pizza sponsor of the NFL. By all the old spice products, which you should use all over your body. And by the Lincoln Motor Company. And the first ever MKC. They side of Coronado Island looking into downtown San Diego. Marcus Burley leads. He's already filling in for the injured Jeremy Lane. So Josh Thomas, 32, checks in. They just signed him this week after being released by Carolina. So third down and eight, blitz coming. Rivers steps up looking for Royal. And in coverage, no penalty flag. That is Josh Thomas. They tried to pick on him right away in a good play. Great down here. He's going to go out. We're going to see this. So break, he's going to break it in. They're going to run a natural pick play. You can see Eddie Royal take it outside. Ball not there. Doesn't come up with it. Great defense by Thomas. Get him out of that third and long situation. Now here comes the Seattle offense. Let's see what they can do. Cypress hammers that one. All the way to the back of the end zone. And Cypress standing with his head in both hands. 
as that'll be brought out to the 20. That would have been the first try handling a punt return by Brian Walters. They remember they started this year with Earl Thomas, their three-time Pro Bowl safety handling punts in week one. Didn't go all that well, and that's it for him because Pete Carroll wants him to focus on defense and not worry about returning punts. And he is one of the, if, I shouldn't even say one, he is the best free safety in the NFL. Uh, so to have him out there, you want your playmakers, but the ability to possibly get hurt, let's stick to your defensive guys and bring in a special sense what they're there for. That was early movement on the right side by Luke Wilson. So Lynch will pick up six, but they'll Ball be side. penalized. Number 86 offense, five-yard penalty remains first down. They got Miller for movement. Well, we understand that game at Tampa Bay is scheduled to resume, and they're hoping another five minutes or so. So we'll get you back to that one for those of you waiting to see. The Rams and the Buccaneers. First down at 15 from the 15. And they give it to Lockett. That's Lockett's version, I guess, of that jet sweep. Normally, that's something they give to Harvin. That is something that they give to Harvin, and that's you know what he scored on last week in that football game. Uh, they want are trying to create cre confusion. Look at the deception by Russell Wilson. You can't really see which ball the ball is going to go to. It did not fool Weddle, though. You see him come up and make that big play, get everything forced back in the inside. That's exactly where you want to be. And they have this drive start off with a great winch run and then pull back. Uh, you can't start to drive off that way, and now you're in the second and 13 position. Lynch left all alone, and he stays on his feet up to the 24-yard line. That'll bring up a third down and six for Seattle. Marshawn Lynch is everything that you want now. Getting him the football. Letting him impose his will on the other team. He didn't even run the ball that time. And it's only had four touches. So get him involved. Let Beast Mode unleash to open up your offense. Because that's what your priority is and that's what your identity is. Start with the run. Seattle 2-4 on third down. Wilson rolling in trouble and just throws it away. Penalty flag up to the 35-yard line. Remember a big penalty against Seattle kept San Diego's last drive alive. Seattle hoping for it to come their way this time. It's against Seattle. Pass interference, six. Offense, penalty is declined. Fourth down. Well, that's on uh, Zach Miller. He had two penalties on that drive. Those are the things that you can't have starting the second half, trying to get in motion, trying to get in rhythm as an offense. Those penalties keep pushing you back and keep pushing you back, and next thing you know, you're pressing, trying to make plays. Mm -hmm. Royal stands back at his 30. Boy, a booming punt by Ryan. All the way to the 14-yard line. And tripped up, pretty good return. Up to the 31. There is a penalty flag all the way back at the line of scrimmage. Penalty flag, back up here. Once more against the Seahawks. Holding, number 50, the kicking yard penalty, the fourth down. It's K.J. Wright. They're bringing it back. I think that uh, 
I think San Diego is going to take the penalty, back him up, force him to punt it again because that last punt by Ryan was a monster, 61 yards. How do you feel if you're one of the guys on a special teams here after you just ran down the field? It's 120 almost down there on the field. Now they're telling you, hey, big fella, come on back. Let's do it again. I mean, that is a full sprint for you. I mean, you're laying everything you, you have out on the line on those punt coverages. And, the, and that's what we, we heard from them. We're on the attack. We want to be aggressive. We want to be going after people. So when you run down all the way down there, you, you, you file it after a great big punt like that. And then to have to come back and, and get that penalty, you're giving them another opportunity to get better field position after a bomb that was just kicked. All right. So now Ryan right on the edge of the goal line. And, man, he levels into this one as well, all the way back to the 20. Now, remember, they had it in the 31, and they're not going to do that well. Great coverage by Seattle. So you make them punt it again, and you actually lose eight yards. That was a 66-yard punt by Ryan. We heard Pete Carroll say, nothing wrong with Marshawn Lynch, but we can't give him the ball if we don't have the ball. And, and that's the problem right now is that the Chargers have had the possession 24 to 41 to 10 54 and when Seattle does get the ball they got it into his hands had a big big run comes back for the holding they have the pass to him out of the backfield comes back for another penalty those are the things that just keep getting you out of rhythm out of rhythm out of rhythm and out of your game plan and, and of who you are so if you cut those things out you've got the talent on the football field go back to the fundamentals of your offense First down, they put it in the hands of Woodhead. Now, that was a successful play in the first half a couple of times. They tried it twice now to begin the second half, and not much there. Brandon Meebane doing a great job inside, just eating up tacklers and just not moving. He's got so much balance and leverage. If you talk to anybody on the Seattle defense, they will say he's the MVP because he forces running backs to run sideline to sideline that plays right into the speed of the Seattle Seahawks defense. Every category dominated by San Diego. But the only category that matters, the one up in the left-hand corner of your screen. And it's only a six-point lead. Rivers connects to Gates, trying to strip the football out there as Chancellor, but it's a first down up to the 44-yard line. See Antonio Gates right here. He's going to play it upfield. He's going to run straight. His decisive decision making, pressing it, breaking, getting out of that break, getting Cam Chancellor back on his heels uh, so that he can't really step up and make that play. That's the matchup that they're obviously going to is the Cam Chancellor and Antonio Gates. And that's where Antonio Gates scored down there that touchdown down in the red zone on that one on one. Royal. Well, what a play that was on the corner. Check in quickly with Kurt Menefee in L.A. Here's a combination you may have seen a few times. Demarius Thomas and Peyton Manning. Scoop catch. That's against Kansas City, and just like that, the Broncos are on a roll. Here we go. It's 21-10 at halftime. David and Tom. Thank you very much, Kurt. What a play there by Burley. We saw him lead the last time. He blew that play up right from the very beginning. And that's the impact that he brings, and that's what they need right now. Physical tackling. Keep this Chargers offense in their, their out of comfort zone. Keep them in those third and long situations. That's where they struggled last week. Rivers buying a little time. Good running room. And he tiptoes and up for a first down to the 44 yard line. That's something that we're not used to seeing Philip Rivers is outrun people, but he's smart. He makes his progressions downfield. He sees that there's nothing happening. He doesn't force anything, breaks the contain, and is able to run and see where those sticks are, not take the hit and get that first down. There is a, an injured charger on the field. Looks like their left tackle, King Dunlap. Let you know on him when we get back.
Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Microsoft Surface, the official tablet of the NFL. First down for San Diego. Boy, this could be a big blow. King and Dunlap there. Outstanding left tackle. Heads to the locker room. Willie Smith takes over for him at that position. And Woodhead for maybe a yard, or rather Brown on first down. Smith played a little bit in week one, primarily on special teams. He started last year on injured reserve for the Raiders, and finally was Wade. Chargers brought him in, played in a couple of games, did not play in the postseason. Well, he's got some very big shoes to fill. King Dunlap has been having a great game today. Last season did an unbelievable job of protecting Philip Rivers' blind side. So we'll see if there's a matchup now that they're going to take advantage of on the defense of Seattle. Woodhead ran into his own offensive line. So you talk about, you no, know, really any team. No team is going to have success constantly staring down the barrel at third down and nine. And after a couple of nothing handoffs, it's third and nine. They'll line up Irvin. And now they switch places. Go right to that new tackle side. They load it up. He holds up. Crossing pattern. First down and more on the reception to Royal. And again, that is Sherman in coverage. Tell you what, they are successfully, when they've gone against Sherman, they have been successful. They sure have. Eddie Royal is going to run that pick inside. Natural, he's going to break. You see the linebacker and Sherman kind of run into each other. And look at the speed of Eddie Royal break out of this thing. He's out of this route. He's going to catch it. And look at him turn right upfield and turn up for those sticks. That's a great play. And like we said, that right there has already changed what the Green Bay Packers didn't do last week. They're saying we're going to play our offense on, on the San Diego side. We're going to run our stuff. And by running those natural breaks where they see a linebacker coming in, that's where you're going to make some mismatches up. And that's where Sherman isn't as effective as he can be. Well, this is not good news for Seattle. They're three-time Pro Bowl safety. We were just talking about Earl Thomas shaking up on the play. You know, we talked to Pete Carroll yesterday, not necessarily about, you know, Green Bay not going after Sherman, but just the philosophy of letting one player sort of get in your head. He said, believe me, we're not crazy about facing Patrick Peterson two times a year, outstanding corner at Arizona, but we can't let him completely alter how we go about our offensive game plan. And he said, it's not like we're going to challenge him as a football player. We're not going to challenge who he is. We know that these are the best corners in the NFL. But at the same token, you've got to run your stuff. You've got to give your receivers confidence that one player on the defense isn't going to close a complete side of the field. All right, Jerron Johnson. Fourth round draft pick in 2012 out of Boise State. He will come in to replace the injured Earl Thomas at free safety. Lock running. Just a five minutes here in the third quarter. San Diego with a six-point lead. First down. Woodhead takes a pitch. Well, what a block he got from Roy. You talk about wide receivers putting a hat on somebody. The Charger wide receivers have done plenty of that today. Eddie Royal does a great job out here. You're going to see him veer outside and make a key block out here on this defensive back. Right there alone, it's setting the edge. It's giving Danny Woodhead a lane to run through. And that'll open up things for Willie Smith to get down there and make an extra block. Who would have thought that with four minutes left to go in the third quarter, San Diego would be identical almost in rushing yards with Seattle. Corner of the end zone, and that one thrown out of bounds. Well, the stats are really skewed in San Diego's favor, and a credit to them for holding on to the football. 
They've done a great job of holding on onto the football, having nine plus drives, spreading it around the field, getting it to everybody, getting everybody involved. That alone is keeping this defense off kill. They're getting it to Woodhead out of the backfield. They're spreading it out to Antonio Gates, to Royal, all of those things. All right, third down. Tenth play on the drive. Rivers rolling, looking around, has a wide open Woodhead at the top of his screen, and he never saw it. And a flag. Urban hitting Rivers. And they will tack on 15, and that'll be an automatic first down. Well, we talked earlier in the game. See? Personal foul, late hit, out of bounds, number 51. Defense, the goal automatic first down. We talked earlier in the game, Tom, where you pointed one of those out, where Phillip Rivers got out of bounds, got that last little extra shove, and they didn't call it. Here it is, second half, big drive, big play, and this time they call it, and, and look at here we go. Ball is on the 11-yard line, first down, and you're giving San Diego the options to run whatever they want. But, well, we're not going to show you. There's a fan running, fan out, of the running field. out of the field. So we'll let the security folks do a great job. And your Russell Wilson, let, let me take you to your days, David. The all-pro offensive lineman with the Giants. Do you feel helpless like Russell Wilson right now? What I mean is the other team seemingly has the ball the entire game. It's got to feel like that, doesn't it? Uh, it? It most certainly does. I don't even think just Russell Wilson as an offense. They haven't been able to get into a flow of the game because they've been on the sideline watching. And that's something that has been the advantage for the San Diego Chargers. They said, we want to control the time of possession. We've got to control the line of scrimmage. We're not going to hurry up. We're not going to press. And we're not going to make stupid mistakes. But what we're going to do is we're going to come to the line of scrimmage. We're going to make sure that we maximize the time of, the, the time of possession each one. The, each play clock, each possession, those are going to go in our favor. We're going to use the heat. We're going to use all these things to make sure that we're going to do whatever we can to make this defense off balance and not use their dynamic pass rushers, the line switches, everybody coming in and out. We're not going to let them use that to their advantage. Well, it's spotted at the 11, so they can get a first down at the 1. Hey, Capone Field! Stay cool, Down to three, and they just do get it off. Brown takes a handoff. Flag down. Two flags are down. The one's going to be on Willie Smith right Holding. there. Number 69 offense, 10 yard penalty, still first down. That's a fourth penalty against San Diego in the red zone today. Check in with Laura Oakman downstairs. Laura? Well, we're starting to see what the heat's been doing. I just walked by the end zone and the, on the east side, which is a little bit warmer, about 10 degrees. It's 120 degrees. Earl Thomas, it was cramped. So that's why he left the field. He, they're going to give him an IV. His return is probable. We'll st we're still waiting on King Dunlap, but it looks like it's going to be the same thing. The heat definitely not letting up now. All right, Laura, thank you. And the penalty backs him up 10 yards. First and 10 from the 21. Three-man rush. And Rivers has to throw it away. Everybody covered. You know, we've talked so much about San Diego and all the things they have done well. And they have played nearly the perfect game against a team like Seattle so far. But it is still only a six-point game. Because of the penalties. They've worked hard to get down here. Those guys kill you. When you have those penalties, the holes, that absolutely kills your drive. And you can't have that. You can't have one player in an offense completely change the outcome of the game. Rivers throws. And is it a touchdown? It is a touchdown by Antonio Gates. Goodness, with one big left hand. 
to see Antonio Gates right here. He's going to be going up against KJ Wright. He's going to run this route, stutter step. He's going to get outside, watch him break it off, and watch the last little body lean to get to the outside. He's got his eyes on the ball. Look at that stretch out, that lean, the hand-eye coordination. This is what Antonio Gates is known for, his power and his effectiveness down in the red zone. That jump ball ability, that one-on-one -on -one stuff, that's, that's what he's doing, and that's what he's done successfully in this game. Say, if Philip Rivers has brought his A game today, he didn't have it in Arizona. He's got it on the home front. Antonio Gates, third time in his career, he has scored three touchdowns in a game. You've got to go all the way back to 2005 since that happened. You said, David Deal, before this game started, San Diego had to make the plays today to have a chance against Seattle that they did not make in a loss against Arizona, and certainly that all holds true so far. It sure does. Uh, they've been able to fight themselves out of those penalties down here in the mm -hmm. red zone, but they've kept themselves in those third and manageable downs, something they didn't do against the Cardinals. They've been able to come up with key tackles and plays, and the stat to me that sticks out the most, right now in the second half, Seattle has only had three plays on the offensive side of the ball. And two of those three, they've been penalized. Yes, and, and that's not the offense that we know for the Seattle Seahawks off. Well, they'll get it back when we return. 27-14. Hey, this place is rocking here in San Diego. 2.54 to play in the third quarter. The home team has dominated the defending Super Bowl champions thus far. Wilson on first down. Lays it off to Curtis. And that's a good game. Up nine. There used to be you came here, you look around at the top part of the stadium, you'd see a, a banner from every team in the NFL. This year they decided to change it. Make it all to do with the San Diego Chargers. And they're trying to do something different. They want to create that home field atmosphere that they haven't had in a long time. Saw Chancellor leave and go back to the Seahawks locker room. They've already had Earl Thomas shaken up. And that's a first down carry by Lynch to the 49. And they're in hurry up mode. You made a comment, David Deal, during the timeout. That Seattle defense looks just worn out on the sideline. They have been on the field for almost 25 minutes in this game. Catch made by Kirsch. You, know, you, you look at the two scoring drives by Seattle. They had a 51-yard touchdown run by Harvey. Then they scored with one minute left in the first half when they went down the field and scored the touchdown. They have only had one drive in this game that has lasted longer than five plays, and that lasted seven. Ingram after Wilson, who just throws it away. No foul for intentional grounding. The quarterback is out of the pocket. And that is nowhere near characteristic of this offense. This is an offense that runs the football, they themselves control the time of possession, and they're on the attack. They're the aggressive ones. It almost seems like everything has flipped sides today, and Chargers, even though they've gone no huddle and up-tempo, they've really done a great job of keeping Seattle's defense out on the field, and the Chargers team has been the one that's been aggressive and on the attack. The second down, and ten. Good numbers for Wilson. He just hadn't been on the field much. Good protection. What a throw by Wilson. Catch by Waters down to the 17. Wow, what a throw. Russell Wilson keeping his eyes downfield, working through his progressions. Look at this ball where it's put right where the receiver is going. Out of the way that the, the defensive back cannot get there. This is what we need to see out of this offense and Russell Wilson. So Walters makes the reception. The 19 yard line under a minute to play in the third. Jump ball. And out of bounds is Baldwin. Good coverage out there by Wright. Remember now, we talked about some of the injuries, you know, here in the secondary as this game has gone on for Seattle. We saw Thomas Lee, we saw Chancellor go to the locker room a moment ago.
San Diego came into this game missing Brandon Flowers, outstanding corner, he's out with an injury, and Jared Johnson, one of their best defenders at linebacker, his wife went into labor. I know, and Brandon Flowers is a player that last week essentially shut down Larry Fitzgerald, did not have him out on the football field, was a big loss, but that's the next man up mentality. When somebody goes down, somebody's got to step up and, and really take charge. And it's not only just an individual. It relies on everybody else on that defense to step up and make plays. You need your defensive line to get more pressure in the quarterback's face. You need your linebackers to do a better job in coverage. Those are the things that the offense, that the defense does. When one person's out, next man up, step up. Third down. Big play for the Seahawks. Lynch wide open to the end zone, touchdown. And the Seahawks, as they so frequently do, when they need a big play, they make it. Great design by the Seattle Seahawks here in their scheme of getting Marshawn Lynch out there. You're going to see him come right here out of the backfield. But what they're going to do is they're going to clear the route opening for him. You see Butler's got a man-to-man. -man, but with that receiver taking that inside route, Butler's just going to naturally get picked to get that ball to Marshawn Lynch out of the backfield for the touchdown. Well, that's the second time they've just left the Lynch wide open. They remember on the last drive. Later reception was called back for a penalty, and a point after is good. So the Seahawks answer, and boy, do they need an answer. Lynch only had two receiving touchdowns all of last season, and gets one here. Well, coming up in October, history will be made as baseball's postseason moves to America's new sports network, Fox Sports 1. Your new home for baseball's National League Division and Championship Series. It all begins this October. Of course, up in Seattle, they're hoping that the Mariners can find a way to sneak into the playoffs. Only one game out of that American League wild card. Well, what a game this has been. It's been an unbelievable game, and it, it's been almost a, a, a tale of... of opposites you know we spoke before the game that seattle was going to come out they were going to run the football they were going to set the physical tone early but the chargers have done an unbelievable job of using that up-tempo offense to their advantage they haven't been flying around they haven't been pressing things they're not forcing things but what they're doing is is that unbalancing act that they're doing for against the Se seahawks defense the fact that they're keeping them on the field for those drives that they're going no huddle We've seen the Seattle defense on the sidelines. We hear cramping. We've seen them getting water under the bench. That time of possession of 31 minutes right now has completely broken down this defense. It's been great now. Seattle just came back with a, a, a good drive by Russell Wilson, getting Marshawn Lynch involved. The defense definitely needs to step up right now. We'll put it out of the end zone. We will have one more play here in the third quarter. Eight plays, 70 yards, and only took the Seahawks two minutes and 58 seconds. That is their first drive of this game. Of eight plays or more. San Diego has had four such drives. Of nine or more plays. And that's a total of six possessions. King Dunlap back on the field at left tackle. I'm sure they're very happy about that. First down, breaking a tackle is Ryan Matthews. We haven't called his name in a long time. He has been a non-factor here today. All right, that's the end of the third quarter. What will the final 15 minutes hold? Antonio Gates has three of them so far. Fox NFL Sunday continues after a break from your local Fox station. Laura Oakman reported earlier about Pete Carroll when asked, we were with him yesterday, you know, what would you do to prepare your team about the heat? He said nothing. He just put up his fingers and made zero. Well, you also don't prepare for your defense to be on the field 31 out of 45 minutes. No, you do not. This is unfamiliar territory for this defense. 
Matthews. And that is good enough for a first down up to the 32-yard line. Now let's bring up the speed if you're just tuning in. This has been one heck of a football game. Antonio Gates, three touchdowns in a game for the first time since 05. Harvin's 51-yard run, controversial. He stepped out of bounds, and the play was not overturned. And we mentioned 31, now make it 32 minutes. Time of possession versus only 13 for Seattle. And this is where all of a sudden San Diego can change another dimension in this game. Something they haven't done much is a run game with Matthews and now three good runs to begin this drive. That's what they want to do now is they want to get him rolling. They want to have him take over in the fourth quarter. And that's something that people don't know about his yardage last year. Out of Ryan Matthews total yardage, 534 of them were in the month of December. That shows he's a durable back, durable back and a tough one. Second down and five. It brings up third down. Look at the defense cooling off in the cool zone. Those guys have been doing a great job today. Mass substitutions for Seattle on defense, and they have guys walking to the sideline. Eight of 12, the Chargers on third down. This is a third and two. Rivers dives, first down. He has converted a couple of big third downs in this game with his legs, something he rarely does. And on something like this, they only rush three on this. So right away, he looks downfield, he see doesn't have anything. Takes the ball and runs with it and gets that first down. That'll be another first down, and here in the fourth quarter, they're taking all the time that they can gobble up. Clock at 11. And the ball is loose. And Matthews so fortunate to get it back. That was a turnover Seattle's been looking for that has eluded their great defense so far. It's just a bobbled handoff. He doesn't take it all the way in. You can see, you know, I'm sure he's looking to set up that line of scrimmage. He's looking to see how that play is going to develop up front. See his eyes, but the most important thing is get that ball. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Domino's. Oh, yes, we did. By DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. And by Bud Light, who reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. That's a great look at the San Diego SeaWorld, the animal theme park, Oceanarium, and Marine Mammal Park. Full of animal habitats, rides, shows, and play areas for all kids. Opened in 1964, and it's unbelievable. 190 acres. Some kind of place. You gotta take your daughter over there. I most certainly have to. If she could, she would have a zoo. Right now we have Ryan Matthews after that that failed exchange, which by the way, it was Eddie Royal who came over to recover that fumble. What happened here? You're looking, you can easily see that Ryan Matthews' eyes are at the line of scrimmage, but you can't close these hands until that ball is delivered to you. You see, he closes his hands and his fists too quickly before that ball is in the bread basket in that stomach, and that's what creates that fumble right there. And there's 11 Royal, who comes down the line to cover up that loose football. Well, while we have a moment, while they're still looking at Matthews, let's check in with Kurt Menefee. Well, the Green Bay Packers were down 21 to three at one point against the Jets. Randall Cobb scores, bringing a little bit closer. They're not going to come back. 13 unanswered. It's 21-16 right now in the third quarter at Lambeau. Tom and Dave. All right, thank you very much. This is not a good sign here. Matthews leaving the field on the park. You know, he was so injury prone after his rookie year. 
Last year was the first time he played in 16 games in his career. And boy, did he deliver the goods. Rushed for 1,255 yards. That's the most by any charger since the great LaDainian Tomlinson. And I think more than anything, that second-half push that the Chargers offense made, yeah, everybody wants to point to Phillip Rivers, but Ryan Matthews yep. was a key factor in them pushing down the stretch and making the playoff run that they did. Well, they won five by their last six, including four in a row. They went on the road and beat Cincinnati in the opening round and narrowly lost to Denver. Dropped off now to Brown. What an outstanding play in the open field made by... Sharon Johnson. Remember, he's filling in for earlier when Thomas left. There's the first fumble right there, the one that's knocked out. Well, that was one of the things that they said early on in his rookie year, the ball security aspect of his game. You know, he improved that, his durability, his toughness. But that right there alone is going to get with some people off the field. Third and long, they need to get to the Seattle 46-yard line. Put it in the hands of Royal, still on his feet, but short of a first down by about four yards. And out comes the punt team. That's a huge stop right there for the Seattle defense to get their offense back out on the field in a one-possession game. Hopefully they get some good field position. But that drive alone, with that pause, that stop, that fumbled ball, that isn't the rhythm that this offense has had. So it's going to be interesting to see if, if the Seattle offense takes advantage of that situation. Ryan Walters stands back inside his own 10. And over and home by Cyphers. Fair catch. Cleanly caught at the 14. When Wilson has had the ball, he's been mighty good. And now he has a chance to give his team the lead if he can get him to the end zone. 10-16 to go. David Deal, you won a pair of Super Bowl rings as a New York Giant. Here the Seahawks have been dominated the entire game. But if they go down the field and score here, they go in front. What is it about championship teams that just find a way to get it done? They believe in themselves. They believe in their, their offense and their team that they're going to put themselves in the best position. But more importantly, this is a battle-tested team. We've been in worse situations yep. than this before, and we fought our way out of it. This is no different. They're in that position, a one position, a possession game. Things haven't been going their way, but this is where they can make a difference and change things. Well, they've given up 27, and that has been a key number. When you put that on the board. First down. Taken one way, come back the other way. Catch is made up to the 21-yard line by Jermaine Christie. Hey, another name we haven't called in a long time in this game is Percy Harvin's name. No, we haven't. Uh, we've been calling Curse's name and Baldwin's name, but uh, ever really since that touchdown, we really haven't heard from Percy Harvin. Lynch for a first down up to the 27-yard line. And it really, you know, David, maybe that speaks about how good the Seattle team is. Their, depth Their defense has been on the field the entire game. Harvin, yeah, he has a 51-yard touchdown, but it should have been overturned. Lynch has not been a factor in any way, shape, or form, and yet they are one score away from the league. That just shows you the type of team that they are, that they can fight through things and, and stick in football games. There's a reason why they've won a championship last year. And... Oh, thrown away by Wilson. It's a smart play right there by Russell Wilson. He's not going to do anything to, to cost this team the football game. He's going to make sure he gets rid of that ball and, and make sure that he keeps this team in keel so that they're not fighting out of negatives and, and most importantly, that they're not going to have a turnover. Second down and ten. On the 
Seattle 27-yard line. Wilson chased by Ingram who missed him. And now throws on the run, dropped. Catch it should have been made by Baldwin. Jason Verrett, the number one draft pick out of TCU, forced into a starting role today with the injury to Flowers. So now, still a long time to go in this one at 9.01, but you can rest assured this crowd is going to let it rip for this third down. Timeout. A 30-second timeout. Well, Dramania NFL Week 2 continues with Sunday Night Football coming up later on tonight. That's at 8.30 Eastern on NBC. 49ers trying to go to 2-0. Bears are looking for their first win. And tune in tomorrow night. Monday Night Football over on ESPN. Colts looking for their first win. Philly looks to try to go to 2-0. You played in that NFC East for a dozen plus years, David Deal. Is Philadelphia clearly the team to beat? Well, everybody's talking about that coming in, that this is the team to beat, that, you know, after last season, well, what is it, a Chip Kelly experiment? We're going to see how other teams respond to that up-tempo offense that all their scoring drives were two minutes and 50 seconds or less. Chargers blew the 11-point lead last week, third and ten. Movement along the offensive line. Start, number 64 offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Now, is that in direct relation to the crowd? It looks like he uh, he moved to point things out, but then at the same time, you're going to see that they're going to bring pressure. They're going to show that they're going to be putting some people off the edge. And right here, you're going to see him that he's going to go point and move. But he moved his body. When it's just a point with your hand or it's just a hand signal gesture, that's one thing. But it was clear that he gave a little kick out of the pass set. Third and 15. <laughs> Missing on a sack. Ingram Wilson tries to dive for the first down. Ball is loose. He dove right at the first down mark in the 38-yard line. The runner was ruled down by contact, short of the line to gain. How about Fourth that? down. He's a yard and a half short. Dwight Freeney on the opposite side is the one who's responsible for this. You're going to see him rip around the edge of Russell Okung and make Russell Wilson force himself out of the pocket. Good hustle there by Donald Butler. Back for the Chargers. So on a fourth down, the Seahawks with 8.15 left will punt. The Lions had a good day punting the football. This is another dandy. And it goes into the end zone. 7.57 to play. Can Rivers and the Chargers... Put this one on ice. Today's game is sponsored by Lowe's. Lowe's never stop improving. San Diego with a football. 7.57 to go. And the Chargers with a 27-21 lead over the defending Super Bowl champion Seattle Seahawks. Playing for the injured Matthews. No gain on first down. This drive right here brings me back to last week when they were on the opposite side. Arizona Cardinals were in the same position. They took a drive where the defense needed to stop. They drove it all the way down the field to score the game-winning touchdown and really sealed that victory and control the time of possession. The Chargers offense needs that drive right now. And five of their seven 
possessions in this game outside of a kneel down. It's gone for eight plays or longer. Second down. They'll move the chains. Let's send it up the road to L.A. and Kurt Benefee for a game break. Hey, remember that 21-3 Jets lead at Lambeau? Well, forget about it. Randall Cobb, second touchdown of the game. They have a two-point conversion. Packers have scored 21 straight and now lead at 24-21. Tom, David, and Laura. All right, Kurt, thank you. Well, Thomas and Chancellor are back for Seattle. But a second down and nine completion to Royal. Gives the Chargers a fresh set of downs. And Donald Brown off the right side for a couple of yards. And they'll take that on the offensive side of the ball because what's happening? Tick, tick, tick. They want that time off the clock. And they just want to keep doing whatever they can to move those chains and grind this game out. Second and nine. Little delay to Woodhead. And that did not fool Michael Bennett. No, it did not. Did a great job of keeping this contained at that end, seeing the handoff, and really just going right down the line of scrimmage and making a great play on it. Biggest play of this drive so far, right here and right now. If you don't convert, Seahawks get it back with just under five to play. If you do convert, you get a chance to burn some time. Third down and eight, four-man rush, Rivers, caught by who else? Antonio Gates. Great job by the offensive line here, stepping up, protecting well. Antonio Gates, we're going to see him coming out, breaking out of it. We're going to see him one-on-one. -on -one. Look at those breaks, that footwork. For somebody as big as he is, that's the matchup that he, he creates, that mismatch. We saw him earlier on K.J. Wright. We saw him earlier with Cam Chancellor. They're really doing a great job of giving him the opportunity to be successful and uh, play his football game. 12 year tight end. Undrafted college free agent out of Kent. Where he was a basketball player, of course. Brown trying to just get back to the line of scrimmage and does. Gates has been one of the game's very, very best of all time. Only Shannon Sharp and Jason Witten, along with Tony Gonzalez, have more receptions at the tight end position. But Gates has the second most touchdowns in the history of football as a tight end. 90 now of them in his career. The great Tony Gonzalez, 111. He really helped revolutionize the tight end position. Former basketball player to come in here and learn an offense, learn the position, really use his athletic ability to jump ball. Uh, that right there is set the trend of other coordinators, organizations going out and going to look for basketball players. So they make the completion to Brown. And here we go again on a third down. The Seahawks have two timeouts remaining, and they've elected not to take one right here. And yet Rivers is getting them to the line of scrimmage to keep Seattle from substituting. It's worked from all game, and that's what's kept them fresh on offense, and really has worn down that Seattle defense. Third and seven, blitz coming. Rivers in trouble. And flipped it forward. That is, are they saying incompleted pass? Rivers is talking to the head linesman, Dana McKenzie. They're going to run an inside stunt right here with Jordan Hill and, and Michael Bennett. They're going to run a little TT that's going to cause that pressure that Phillip Rivers can't step up into the pocket. And Jordan Hill was the one who finally tripped him up. All right, so Seattle 
will get the football back. Cypress end over end. Walters will field it, but it's out of bounds. 91 yards away after the stop by the Seattle defense. Incredibly, in just his third year in the league, Wilson has already collected 10 game-winning drives in the fourth quarter or overtime. The only quarterback in the NFL with more than 10 the last three years is Andrew Luck in Indianapolis. He's going to need to come up big on this drive right here. They need to play their game. They need to come out and establish themselves right away. You've got two timeouts left. You Three minutes and four seconds left in the game. You've got to make sure each and every possession, each and every drive, each and every play here is the best that it could be with no mental errors. And they spun the ball at the 11, so they have to go 89 yards. And on the jet sweep, what a play made by Sharice Wright to chop down Harvin. That is Harvin's first touch since he fumbled the kickoff. You're going to see him shoot out here. You can't see him on the screen, but he's going to shoot from the outside here and do a great job of making this tackle. Boom! Great job. Big play of, of getting through that block out there by Baldwin and making that play when they needed to. And the Seahawks spend a timeout, which means they have one remaining. Next week, Fox NFL Sunday. Bring to the Redskins against the Eagles. Some will see Colin Kaepernick in the 49ers. You and I will be there in Arizona. That could be a good one. Yeah, it most certainly will. I'm looking forward to that one. And it all gets started at 11 a.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1, followed by Fox NFL Sunday at noon Eastern. His own end zone. Just a flip in the air to Lynch. And he is dragged down by Ingram and a host of others. Third and long coming up. Everybody talks about the Seattle defense swarming to the ball. But right here, we're going to see all white. Look at him flying to the ball. Get there. One, two, three. By the end of the play, we're going to see more than half of the defense over there hooping and howling, getting ready. Timeout on the field. Biggest play to keep their hopes alive when we return for the Seattle Seahawks. Third down and 12. Low snap. Wilson in trouble. Gets it off. Denied the first down. Reggie Walker applying the pressure. And San Diego's defense stands tall. Now timeout. timeout. 32nd timeout will be called because I mean what do you have to lose perhaps if you're Pete Carroll you have well they signaled that was a San Diego I thought they said a timeout but we understand now it is a Seattle timeout so they're gonna go for it you have nothing to lose absolutely not and that's that's what who they are as a team good bad and different whatever situation they are in they're gonna come out firing they're not gonna concede this game and and you've got to respect that about Pete Carroll and this football team because that's what's got them in the position that they, they've been in to win the Super Bowl and the success that they've had as a team. All right, fourth down and 11. They need to get to the 22-yard line. Looking for a curse. Penalty flag in the backfield. Back behind the line of scrimmage, and the Seahawks are pointing that it's against San Diego. And that's Ingram. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 86. 
That's on Zach Miller, third penalty against him today. What did you see there, David Dean? You're going to see it that right here. Dwight Freeney is one on one against Zach Miller. He's going to give him that inside smooth move, spin move that Dwight Freeney is so good at. He sees that he gets him beaten. You're going to see Zach Miller kick him right there to try to block him and stop him that pressure. That right there alone, that pressure of Freeney one on one against the tight end, that's not the matchup that you're looking for in this key situation. Our game today produced by Bob Stenner, directed by Greg Scopatoni, our technical producer Bob Muller, technical director Dave Crawford, replay producer Mark Teitelman, our associate director Yvonne Wagner, and our broadcast associate Jordan Wolf. We thank our spotter Scott Snyder, our statistician Tom Barbary, as well as Eric Morton, Mike Eldridge, and our entire Fox crew. Many said Seattle invincible. Yeah, this San Diego Chargers team, really an attitude, David Deal, from the very beginning, especially as it pertains to not being afraid. And Philip Rivers said during the week, we're not going to be afraid of Richard Sherman. We're not going to be afraid of the Seattle Seahawks. We're not going to be dumb, but they brought the game to them. They most certainly have, and that's what put them in a position to win this football game. A zebra doesn't change his stripes. We're going to play our game. We know what our team is. We know what where our identity and philosophy is as a team. And we don't care about the other side of the ball. If we do our job, if we take care of ourselves, the outcome will come in the factor that we want it to. Well, Mike McCoy's team looked dead in the water last year. They started four and six. They ripped off five out of six, including four in a row to get into the playoffs. They beat Cincinnati. That was a shocker on the road. And now taking a knee and getting hit from the back side. He had not taken a knee. So that's a clean shot for Chansey. That's a clean shot. Sure it is. I mean, the quarterback can't complain to the official if he hasn't taken a knee. It was simple. He's trying to wear out the clock. He didn't go down. His knee didn't hit. Cam Chancellor made a play. You may hear the, the boos or whatever from the crowd, but that knee wasn't down. The time wasn't stopped. The play wasn't over. And that might, might have been what Pete Carroll said to him. Said, hey, look, if he's going to dance around back there, maybe come up behind him, hit him, and jar the ball loose. Yeah, hey, it's a, a great move. You play until the whistle's done, until the, the play is over, and the play wasn't over. And now San Diego spends a timeout with a minute two left. Seattle out of timeouts. So... If you're clean with the exchange on the football, you can take a knee on third down and take a knee. Well, you'd leave him a little bit of time if you took a knee with a change of possession on fourth. Yes, you would. You'd leave him a little bit of time. Uh, so we're going to see if they're actually going to sit here and run a play, if they're going to kneel down. Uh, this is a big decision right here. Take a knee one more time. And this will run the play clock down to about, what, 18 seconds. And they still have a fourth down. Brandon Meebane still, see, he's still going. They're still on the attack. For them, this game is not over, and, and that's a sign of a of a team that's that's still fighting and still hoping that something happens in their favor. And you saw that Camp Chancellor who played before, Brandon Meebane. They That's the, the sign of a team that still believes in forcing that ball out. Antonio Gates. Oh, what a day it has been for the future Hall of Famer today.
unbelievable game. Seven receptions, 96 yards, but his effectiveness down in the red zone to come up with those three touchdowns. And look at the emotion right there. For all you guys who doubted him and didn't pick him in fantasy, look at you now. He's a real deal. He is today's real deal. I don't believe that. So now they will indeed send a field goal unit out. 28 yard attempt. He's had three of them blocked in the last year and a half, but this one right down the middle to make it a two possession game. 30 to 21, and that will tie a ribbon around this one. You just can't give enough credit. You're not going to sit here and harp on Seattle getting beat. You give all the credit today, and there's a time and a place for blaming somebody here or blaming a team there. Today, it is just a matter of San Diego playing one solid football game. It is. The time of possession, 59% on third downs. They fixed the problems that they had last week coming into this game. The missed tackles, the missed opportunities. They came up with those plays that were in big situations today to come away with this win. Well, look at the numbers for Rivers today. 28 out of 37, 284 yards. Three touchdowns. And you know, the one thing about him is when we interviewed him and you see him on the football field, this is a, a consummate competitor who hates to lose. And when we talked to Mike McCoy and the rest of the team, everyone said that they would go out and fight and do anything for Phillip Rivers because they believe him and they believe that he's the best opportunity. 46 wins against only 19 losses for Rivers here at home. Run a touchdown pass and now what, 22 consecutive games. Making his 131st consecutive start. That is second to your former teammate, Eli Mann. Of course, they were traded, in essence, for one another on draft day. There's a bouncing ball, tripped up to the 30-yard line. 13 seconds remain. The last time the Seahawks lost by more than seven points. Now, you want to talk about something hard to believe? Think about this. The last time they lost by more than seven points, you've got to go all the way back to week nine, 2011. 11. When they lost to Dallas by 10. Of their four losses over the last two years, the total points combined, 18. Wilson still on his feet and complete. Tell you another guy, David Deal, that you talked about earlier. A guy who's really had an impact in this game is Melvin Ingram. He most certainly has a, you know, coming off of the knee injury, that added experience on outside linebacker. He's made a, a lot of great tackles, not only coming to him, but running him down. He's caused pressure. He's had uh, just an unbelievable game that they needed, and that's something that they lacked, is that pass rush ability on that defensive side of the ball. He is an incredible athlete. He came all the way back from the torn ACL five months after injuring it to play in the playoff game at Cincinnati, and he had an interception in that playoff win. So be Baldwin. And that will end it. To many, a shocker for Philip Rivers at home. Just another day at the office. After an ugly loss in Arizona, a win for San Diego over Seattle.